Next, let's talk about coaching for behavioral change. My goal is to teach you pretty much everything I've learned in the area of behavioral coaching and try to help you be a great behavioral coach. Our whole coaching process is based on a philosophy called Feed Forward. Feed Forward is a fascinating idea and it's an exercise that I've done now with thousands and thousands of people in leadership classes. Here's the way the Feed Forward exercise works. I ask every participant in class to talk to as many people as they can talk to in 10 to 15 minutes. And here are the rules of the exercise. Rule number one is you have to let go of the past. Let go of the past. We spend too much time looking at the past anyway. How many of you have been impressed by your spouse, partner, friend, or significant others near photographing memory of your previous sins, which have been documented and will be shared to help you get better? How many of us have helped other people by impressing them with our memory of their previous sins? How useful is this anyway? First thing I tell people in the exercise is we're not going to talk about feedback about the past. We're only going to talk about ideas for the future. Then the second rule in the exercise is you can't judge or critique others' ideas. All you can do is listen to the ideas, think about what people say, take notes, and say thank you. People in this exercise have two goals. One goal when they're in that listening mode is called learn as much as you can. And the other goal is help as much as you can. Now let's say I'm working with someone whose issue is listening and my issue is more positive recognition. The way the exercise works is I'd say, you know, I want to do a better job of giving people positive recognition. I had a couple of ideas to help me for the future. What would they be? I shut up, listen, take notes, and say thank you. The other person says, Marshall, I want to do a better job of listening. I had a couple ideas to help me. What would they be? I give them the ideas. They shut up, listen, take notes, and say thank you. We shake hands, go out and talk to another person. Whoever ends up having the most conversations wins the prizes. At the end of the exercise, I ask people, what was this exercise like? Give me one word to describe your reaction to this exercise. What is the most common word people mention? Fun. Fun. What's the last word you think about in thinking of any feedback and development activity? Fun. Yet 95% of the people define this as fun, not painful, awkward, embarrassing, or uncomfortable. Why? A few reasons. One is, it's quick. And one of the things I want to teach you about coaching is be fast. Get to the point. People can't remember eight unrelated words on a piece of paper anyway. We can give them 50 different ideas. We're just wasting our time. And the more we talk to people, what tends to happen to the quality of the ideas? They get worse. Let's say I talk to you for a couple minutes. I give you my three best ideas. Then I talk some more. Now you're my fourth best idea. Now I talk for an hour. You're my 37th best idea. What happens to the quality of our ideas as we keep babbling? They get worse and worse. And by the way, what are people more likely to remember? Our first good idea, our last stupid idea. Our last stupid idea. Another reason people love this is it's focused on a future we can change, not a past we can't. Successful people love getting ideas aimed at helping them achieve their goals. Successful people hate being proven wrong. In this exercise, you don't prove people wrong. Another thing about the exercise is no judging or critiquing of ideas. If I had let in the exercise people judge and critique ideas, they'd spend twice as much time evaluating the quality of the ideas as they spend listening to the ideas. How much do we learn proving other people are wrong? Nothing. How much do we learn defending that we're right? Nothing. In this exercise, you don't have to do either. People also learn they can learn from everybody around them, and they don't have to be an expert to help another person, and they don't have to have a deep knowledge to help another person. People are always amazed how much they learn from people that they barely know. Now, this feed-forward exercise is a great lead-in to the process of coaching for behavioral change. And that's what I'd like to talk about right now, the steps in the behavioral coaching process. What are the steps in the process? Well, step number one, involve the person you're coaching in determining the desired behavior for a person in this position. I mean, you can't expect a person to change behavior if they don't know what desired behavior is. Number two, involve that person in determining who are their key stakeholders. Behavior cannot be judged by yourself. Interpersonal behavior only makes sense in the context of the perception of another person. There are two reasons people deny the validity of input or feedback. Number one is wrong questions. 
Number two is wrong raters. I involve the people I coach in determining what are the right questions and who are the right raters. And by the way, most of the people I coach report to the CEO. I also involve the CEO. I learned this the hard way. I worked with one person for a year. person made huge improvement. At the end of the year, the CEO said, yeah, he got better, but what he got better didn't matter that much. It wasn't that important. I learned not to make that mistake again. I now not only involve the person in determining the key behavior and key stakeholders, I involve that person's manager. This way, there's no denial at the end of the year that this is important. Now, a key in coaching for behavioral change is to recruit key stakeholders to be part of the change process. I've gone through three levels of behavioral coaching, which I'd like to share with you. I've gotten progressively better at this as I've gone through the levels. Level one, I had the hallucinogenic belief that other people would get better because I became smart, wise, and profound. Wrong. As you can see from the research we've discussed earlier, people's betterness was not a function of me. I learned if people get better, it's not about me, it's about them. And as a behavioral coach, I quit focusing on me becoming an expert. I focused on what they needed and listening to them. I got a whole lot better in behavioral coaching. That was level two, focus on the other person. Now I'm at level three. More than half of my job as a behavioral coach is not spent with the person I coach. It's spent with everyone around the person I coach. Now what's the next step in the process? As I said, we begin with what's the desired behavior and who are the key stakeholders. Then we have that person collect feedback. We use feed forward to figure out how to get ahead to the future. Feedback is a good way to figure out where are we right now. I've done this with confidential 360 feedback. I've done this when people just ask people around them what they need to improve. I don't so much care how people get this feeling for what they need to improve. The key is the person, their manager, and the people around them have a pretty good consensus on what is it. Then next, I help the person analyze results. Now, let me give you some advice as a behavioral coach. In behavioral coaching, I used to suggest to people I coach, pick one to three areas for improvement. Then I got down to pick one or two. Where am I now? Pick one. I used to be a college professor. I used to be a dean. I was a typical young, gung-ho, PhD college professor dean. What was my goal? Teach people everything. I've now had the privilege of working with over 60 major CEOs around the world. What's my goal? Teach people anything. I've become very realistic in my older years. Don't expect people to change everything. Help people change something that's critically important. Now let's say that uh, I'm coaching someone, work with that person, they've gotten feedback. I now teach them how to respond to their key stakeholders. What do I suggest? Respond in a positive, simple, focused way. And again, assume that this profile is, they're smart and dedicated and hardworking, yet arrogant. I recently worked with one of the top generals in the United States Army. I'm a volunteer for the Army, and I, I said, you know, I don't have that too much time, but uh, I may volunteer to help one general. And this top general, I said, describe the profile of a general you might be able to help. I said, smart, dedicated, hardworking, driven to achieve, patriotic, cares about our country, tries to do what's right for America, stubborn, opinionated, know-it-all, and never wants to be wrong. I said, you think you might be able to find me one? He said, Marshall, we have a target-rich environment. Well, this is a pretty common issue, and let's go through this coaching case study and pretend that the person that, uh, that I'm coaching has this issue. Now, they've just got feedback. They're going to go talk to their key stakeholders. What would this conversation sound like? You know, I'm going through this coaching process, and the first thing I want to say is I appreciate you participating to help me. I know your time is valuable. I appreciate you taking a few minutes to, to help me out with this process, and a lot I've learned about myself that's very positive intelligent, dedicated, hardworking, caring about our company and our customers, trying to do the right thing. That's important to me. I'm glad it scores positive, and I appreciate the positive feedback I've received. And there's something I want to do better. I want to be more open-minded. I, I want to hear what other people have to say better. Then we practice feed forward. Just like we talked about in the feed forward exercise, don't ask for feedback about the past, then ask for ideas. Give me a couple ideas tell me for the future what would they be. Whatever the person says, sit there, shut up, listen, take notes, and say thank you. Then say, I'm going to follow up, and I'm going to get better. We have the person follow up and get ongoing suggestions from each one of their key stakeholders. And after they get these suggestions, as a coach, I talk with a person, and I say, what are you learning? What are you learning? I listen to their input. I listen to what they're learning about their suggestions. Then I ask them a question. What are you going to do? And by the way, as a coach, I also give them my own suggestions. And I'm going to teach you a technique you're going to love as a coach. 
when I give people suggestions, I say, please don't judge or critique my suggestions either. I want you to listen to my suggestions. Think about my suggestions. Then I want you to come back and think about all of my suggestions and all the suggestions from the people around you. And then I'm going to ask you a hard question. Tell me, what are you going to do? And every, I tell everyone I coach, you know, I have no interest in what you're not going to do. And I have even less interest in why you're not going to do it. All I care about is what are you going to do? You tell me what are you going to do, and that's where we're going to put our focus. And about 90% of the time when that person comes back, they've listened to all the suggestions, they've thought about it, they give me the plan of what they are going to do, you know what I typically say? Sounds great. Go do that. Now, the people that I coach, I tell them to follow up on a regular basis. And what does that follow-up sound like? Hey, I said I wanted to be more open-minded. It's been a month. How's it going? Any ideas? Uh, how can I do even better next month? Listen, take notes. In about six months, we do something called a mini-survey to measure change. Now, what does a mini-survey look like? Well, a typical mini-survey for the person I described might have, well, let's say four questions. One question would be, ask people what he could do to improve. Another one would be genuinely listens to others. A third might be strives to see the value of differing ideas. And a fourth would be avoids acting arrogant or superior to others. Now let's say the person does what I describe, and the person tries. They're not perfect, but they try. Well, you know, what are the odds they're going to get worse? Almost zero. What are the odds they're going to get better? Almost certain. And look at the way that mini-survey scale is constructed. As you can see, it goes minus 3 to plus 3. It doesn't say is the person good or bad. It says, are they getting better or worse? Well, what do they see? Plus, 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 plus. How's a person feel? Great. I've also coached their coworkers in terms of how to give responses. So instead of cynical or sarcastic comments, they either say, hey, try this in the future and give them feed-forward suggestions, or they say, I really appreciate what you've done over here and give them positive recognition. Either way, it feels good. The person I'm coaching enjoys it. They get the mini-survey feedback. What do they do? They go back and talk to the individual. And what's that conversation sound like? It sounds like this. You know, I just did the mini-survey. First thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you for helping me figure out what to work on in the first place. Number two, thank you for giving me ideas. Hey, I'm not saying I'm doing them all. But you know what? I'm listening. And I'm doing what I can. I'm sure I'm screwing up some, but I, I really appreciate your efforts to try to help me. And, and number three, I just did the mini survey. Things are getting a whole lot better. Thank you for helping me improve. Who gets all the credit for the improvement? The coworkers. Who deserves the credit for the co? Who deserves the credit? The coworkers. How's a coworker feel? Great. Then what's the person say? You know, I'm very proud of my progress in the last six months. I want to do better in the next six. I had to have a couple of ideas to help me do better in the next six, what would they be? Sit there, shut up, listen, take notes. Follow up, follow up, follow up, mini survey. Follow up, follow up, follow up, mini survey. Can you see why I can give my clients a money back guarantee? And can you see why we taught HR professionals in GE to do this? And their results are just about as good as ours. Can you see why we can teach other people to use this coaching process? The key is, if we really want to help people change, don't you be the only coach. The people I coach, who's the major coach? It isn't me. It's everyone around them. I teach them to learn from everyone around them. I teach the people around them to help them learn.